Welcome to the data sheet. In this data sheet, we see employee ID, their name, their surname, age, how long they've been at the company. Now we're gonna use this data to analyze the different age brackets that our employees come in. Hello there, and welcome to this tutorial in which you'll learn how to build a people analytics dashboard in Excel. Best part, it's an interactive people analytics dashboard. You'll also learn how to do some actual people analytics. You work with employee data, with salary data, with performance data, and with much, much more. So if you're interested, buckle up and let's dive right in. Imagine your HR director comes to you and asks you three questions. The first is, how many employees do we have and what does the age distribution in our organization look like? Second, do we really pay for performance? So do we pay top performers better than average and bottom performers? And three, is there a salary gap between male and female employees? Can you answer this question? Here's the data set. I'm gonna help you how to do it. Let's dive right in. Now, before we start off, don't forget to like this video, hit the subscribe button, and click the notification bell so that you get an update whenever we post a new video. Welcome to the data sheet. In this data sheet, we see employee ID, their name, their surname, age, how long they've been at the company, their gender, the region and department they work in, whether they're a manager, yes or no, the hours that they work, the salary band that they have, the full-time equivalent salary, their actual salary, so if they work less, they get paid less, and their performance bracket, which can be bottom, top, or average. Now, we're gonna use this data to analyze the different age brackets that our employees come in. So how do we do that? First of all, we want to format this beautiful table that goes all the way to row 836. We want to format this as a table. So I click a random cell in the table. I hit insert and then table, and then it selects the range automatically. I click my table has headers and I hit okay. And all of a sudden we have a beautiful table. This is very helpful because this helps us to create pivot tables and it helps us to calculate things much faster because structured data in a table is processed by Excel much faster, which is very helpful in case you have a slower computer. So now I first want to see the age distribution. How do I do that? Well, I could potentially sort everything and then go through it and tally it one by one. That's not a very efficient way of doing it. So the way I do this is I go to insert and I hit pivot table. It selects table one, that is the table I just made, and I want to have the pivot table in a new worksheet. I hit okay, and here is my pivot table area. So what do I do with this? Well, first of all, we want to see the different ages. I put age here in the rows, and we see the overview of all the different ages that we have in the company, starting at 19, all the way to 65. Now, I want to know how many of each of these individual ages we have. So I take age again, and I put it in the values. And now you see it automatically jumps to the sum of age. I don't want that, I want the count. So I click it, I click value field setting, and I go to count. And if I hit okay, you see that there are two people who are 19, and the sum is 38, but the count is actually two. So we want the count, not the sum. And here we have a great overview where we know that two people are 19, four are 20, six are 21, etc. This is a good overview, but this is much too granular. So how can we make this more actionable? We do this by right-clicking anywhere in the pivot table and hitting group. When we hit group, we say, well, we want to start at a nice round number, let's say 20. We want to end at 65, that's fine, and then we want increments of five. We hit OK, and there we go. We see that we have two people below 20. We have 33 people from 20 to 24. 25 to 29 is about 92 people, etc. This provides a great overview. And we can easily visualize this by putting our cursor anywhere in the pivot table, hitting insert, going to the bar chart, and creating a bar chart over here like this. Beautiful, 
I think this is a great first visualization that answers our HR director's question, how many people do we actually have? And we can visualize this in an even better way by clicking on the table, going to design, saying we want to add a chart element and we want to uh, add the numbers inside the bars. So we have a great overview of how many people are actually in there. And I don't like that the bars are quite thin, so I can right click them. I can say format the data series, and then I can reduce the gap width to about 100%. I hit OK, and we see that the bars fit much nicer. This is a table that I enjoy much more. Here we say the distribution of employees by age. I can remove this total because there's just one series. And here we go. We have a great overview of the distribution of employees by age bracket. So let's clean this up and let's make an actual interactive HR dashboard. I'm gonna select some of my cells, zoom out a little bit, I'm gonna merge it, I'm gonna make it a nice big font, and I'm gonna say this is my interactive HR dashboard. So let's make it truly interactive. I'm gonna select all my information, give it a nice blue color, make it fat, and add a line at the bottom, just because it looks slightly nicer. There we go, a big line at the bottom. And there is the beginning of our dashboard. Let's move some elements around and let's start to build the dashboard that will help us answer our HR director's questions. So I'm gonna move this table, uh, this pivot table, I click it, I go to pivot table analyze, I hit move, and I'm gonna move it towards C25, somewhere around there. So this is the overview of our age groups. I can call this groups. I can move this table down here, and we have a first idea of what a dashboard could look like. Now there's much more information that I want to add. For example, let's start to think about that initial question that I asked, what is the average uh, salary between male and female employees? And can we get you know, a good understanding of that? So let's dive right in. I'm gonna create a nice clear box with again, some borders around it, on the outside. And I'm gonna visualize this in a nice way by merging some cells and saying, hey, here we want actually the average salary of employees, and here we want the average age of employees. So let's now create the statistics that we can put in these fields in order to answer this question. So how do we draw the average age into our interactive dashboard? And I'll show you how. So what we want is we want to create yet another pivot table. So I'm gonna go to the main data set. I click insert pivot table. I want it in a new worksheet. And there I'm gonna put the age straight into values because we're talking about the entire data set. And I'm gonna hit average. So this is the average age. I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna stand here. I say insert pivot table. The table is again table one in that cell. And this is the average salary. So again, we go to full-time equivalent salary. We make that the average, and here we are. We have the average age and the average salary. So now I go back to my dashboard. I'll call this sheet dashboard, and I want to pull up the average salary. I do that by hitting equal, and now I'm gonna link back to that average salary. There we go. As you can see, the formula now says equal, and then it goes to um, this sheet, and it pulls out this data. I hit enter, and here's the average salary. Now we can format this in a much nicer way. We can make it dollars, we can format it in the middle, and we can make it a much bigger number. We can remove some of the decimals, because we don't have to know it um, all the way behind the decimal, and well, that already looks much better. I'll give this some color, I'll give this some color. Let's now also look at the average age. Again, I open it, I click equal, I go to the pivot table, I hit the average age, again I hit enter, and there it pulls up the average age, 
41.93 something. Again, I get rid of all the decimals and I'm gonna format this the same way. So I'm gonna make this size 18, give this a nice blue color. I'm gonna make it fat and or bold and there we go. So that already looks much better. So we now know the average salary and the average age across our data set. But we want to know the difference between males and females. How are we gonna figure that out? That is the next question. So let's add some slices that allow us to slice and dice the data. I go to any pivot table in my sheet, I hit pivot table analyze, and I say insert slicers. I want to add four slicers, which are people's gender, the region they work in, their department, and whether they're a manager, yes or no. I hit OK, and now you see that there are different slicers that if I make a selection, no, I only want to look at managers, I see that the age distribution of managers is different from the total age distribution. And again, I can just look at the finance department and I see that that age distribution changes again. What doesn't change are that average salary and average age. I can make any selection, but that age remains the same. Some reason, because the column width changes, average salary is hidden, but average salary is still at 103,000. Now, the way I fix this is going to this slicer, and I don't just want to work with this pivot table, I also want it to work with these two pivot tables. So the way I do this is I hit gender, I go to slicer here at the top, and I say report connections. And I don't just want it to link to pivot table one, but also to pivot table two and pivot table three. I hit okay, and now when I just select males, let me make this slightly smaller, males, you see that there's a salary of 108,000, but for females, there's an average salary of 96,000, which is a quite big discrepancy. Now, I don't know why this is. Maybe females work much more uh, part-time and there's some compensation conflicts with that, or they work in less senior functions, but there is a big difference and we need to look into that and potentially do a pay gap analysis to figure out where that difference is coming from. So it's at least the first indication that something is not right here. So let me just order this in a nice way and put this together in our dashboard where I start with the regions, then I add the gender of people. Um, it's a binary system um, in this data set. Um, and here is the department. There we go. So now we have quite a nice overview of all the different slices that we have, and it starts to look like an actual dashboard. Of course, in the region, you know, the regions are not connected yet. So I also want to connect these other slicers. Again, hit that report connection and connect it to all the different pivot tables that we've made. And now our interactive dashboard is starting to take shape. So now I've connected all these slicers and I can see that in finance, the average salary is quite high. Well, in human resources, that salary is much lower. So we're not doing something, you know, we're not, we're doing something wrong in HR. We need to be paid more. And again, I can clear the filter and there we go. So that is the second part of our analysis. We have the feeling that if we just look at genders, we see that between the two genders, there's quite a big pay gap. And that is something that we should analyze some more in order to figure that out. The final question that our HR director asked us was, do we see a difference in pay when it comes to performance? So are top performers paid better than average and bottom performers? Let's figure that one out as well. I'm gonna create one more pivot table. And in that pivot table, I want to look at salaries and at performance. So the way I do this is I hit insert, I go to the pivot table, I again, take the data from table one, and it says I don't have enough space to make the dashboard. So I was too excited about making everything look pretty already. So I'm gonna move this down a little bit. And now I should be able with the same actions to create a pivot table. So Excel is afraid that the tables start running into each other and that is not a good thing. 
So here I look performance, I put performance in the columns. So we see average, bottom, and top performance brackets. And I want to compare that with salaries. So I'm gonna put the salaries here in the values. I'm gonna make that an average because I don't want to look at the sum of everyone, I want to look at their average. And I now see that on average, our average performers get paid about 103,000, our bottom performers about 95,000, and our top performers about 111,000 US dollars. I can format this in a nice way by going to home again, hitting this currency button, clicking the US dollar notation, and removing the decimal places, and now it becomes much clearer. One more thing I can change is I want bottom to be on the left, and then average in the middle, and then top on the right. The way I do this is I right-click bottom, I say move, I say move bottom up, and then bottom is first, then we have average, and then we have top, and this allows us to make a very nice comparison. Now, this is not all, because we saw in our data set that we have different salary bands, and I want to know if a top performer in the first, the lowest salary band, T1, kind of your junior bracket, if top performing juniors get paid more than bottom performer juniors, but also for the mid level and also the senior level salary bands, I want to know if that difference between top performers and bottom performers holds consistent across different salary bands. Because theoretically, it could be the case that a lot of top performers are in our lower salary bands and bottom performers are in higher salary bands, and that skews the average. So I go back to the dashboard, I put our salary band here in the rows. And now I see for the five different salary bands that we have, I see that bottom pay is indeed lower than top pay in terms of performance across all the five salary bands. So this gives me an indication that it actually looks quite balanced, looks quite good. I can easily visualize this by again creating a bar chart. I put that bar chart here smack in the middle. And what do we see? We see that bottom performers across the five salary bands are paid less than top performers. And with that, I can start to pull my dashboard together and create some visualizations because essentially we're done. We've now answered all the questions that our HR director asked of us, and we can start to visualize some of our dashboards. So I can give this a nice color. I can add to this dashboard a title where I go to design, add chart elements. I go to the chart title. I say, hey, this is performance per salary band. Again, I can nicely visualize this, give this an attractive color, make it bold. And what we see here is an interactive dashboard. Doesn't look that good right yet. Um, in order to make those grid lines go away, I hit the view button, I click grid lines, and here we go, we have a fully interactive dashboard. The only thing that I haven't done yet is, you know, I can make a selection between the different departments. I haven't collected or connected this new pivot table to the different slicers. You remember how to do that. You again go to slicer, report connection, and I add that fifth pivot table to all these slicers. And now my entire dashboard should be, or all the slicers should be fully connected with all the data in my dashboard. And with that, I have a 100% interactive dashboard that I can go to my HR manager to. And say, if we look at, you know, people who are not in managerial roles, we see an average salary of 103. People who are in managerial roles, well, they actually have the same salary. That is something that we maybe want to look into potentially. When we look at females, we see that the salary is much lower and we can also look through the different salary bands and we actually see that the difference between bottom and top performers when it comes to um, females is not as strong as when it comes to males. So it could almost be, could actually be that top performing males are getting a better reward, but we don't have the same system in place or it's not as effective for females. And that is something that we should definitely look into when it comes to that pay gap analysis that requires a little bit more data. So this is a great way of how you can uh, build a dashboard, uh, create that visualization and pull all of that data together. There we go. 
This is our interactive HR dashboard that we can now go to the HR director to and that we can use to answer all of our HR questions with. I hope you enjoyed this video. I think this is a fun way to build an interactive and very useful HR dashboard. And we actually did some people analytics along the way, also known as HR analytics, because we did an actual analysis of our bottom performers paid less than top performers. And in general, the answer is yes, Fortunately, that's the case, and we can go back to our HR director and report those answers using this fantastic interactive dashboard. That's it for me in this video. If you enjoyed it, check out our courses at the Academy to Innovate HR. We have a full course on how to build dashboards in Excel, in Power BI, and how to do actual people analytics, even more, much more advanced analyses using Excel. So check that out if you're interested. And of course, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification button. Have a good day. Bye-bye.